To create this gradient area chart that shows the stock price over time, we just need to create three calculated fields. So I'll create a calculated field, and this first one will be for our normalized metric. And I'll be using price as our metric. So I'll type the sum of our price minus the window minimum of the sum of the price. And that's going to be in parentheses. And I'll divide that by the window max of the sum of the price. And then I'll subtract the window minimum of the sum of the price. This formula calculates how much each price compares to the lowest and highest prices within the data set. And it transforms these prices into a scale of 0 to 1, where 0 is the lowest price in the group and 1 is the highest price in the group. And I'm going to copy this formula because it's going to have the same structure as our normalized date. So I'll create another calculated field called norm date, and I'll paste our norm metric formula in here. And everywhere where there's a sum, I'm going to change it to the minimum. And everywhere there's a price, I'm going to change it to our date field. So this calculated field is doing the same thing as our last one, except for this time we're comparing each date to the highest and lowest date within our data set. And lastly, to ensure that our gradients doesn't go above the path that we set, I'm going to create another calculated field for the reversed metric. And this one will just be 1 minus our normalized metric. So it'll be like a normal area chart, but just flipped upside down. To create the structure, I'm going to pull our normalized date into the columns, and I'll pull our normalized metric into the rows, and our reverse metric into the rows. And then under the all marks, I'll move our date field. And I don't want this to be in years, so I'm going to right click and choose the day. And then I'll right click again to make it discrete. The reason I added this field in here is because we're going to have our formulas compute using that date. So I'll right click on our norm date field, go to compute using, and choose date. And I'll do the same process for norm metric and the reverse metric. So you can see how the bottom chart, which is our reverse metric, is just the flipped version of our normalized metric. To get this on the same axis, I'm going to right click on our reverse metric field and choose dual axis. So you can easily see here how the reverse one just flips it upside down. But we don't need the coloring, so I'm going to remove measure names from the all marks. And under the first mark, I'm going to change it from a shape to a line. And under the second mark, I'll change it to an area. For the color, I want to set it to white at 100%. And on our left axis, I'm going to right click and edit the axis. I'll give this a custom range between negative 0.05 and 1.05. Then I'll right click and move marks to the front. That way our line chart appears in front of our area. I'll also edit our right axis and give it that same custom range between negative 0.05 and 1.05. Then under the scale, I'm going to check off the reversed. So now our area chart that has a white background is everything above the line. This will contain our gradients to everything below the line. To add the gradients, I'm going to go to the Map tab at the top, choose Background Images, and choose our Stock Data data source. And I'll add an image that I created from Canva, which is just a gradients. And I'll put the image in the description. For the normalized date, I'm going to set it from 0 to 1. And for the Y field, I'm going to choose our normalized metric, and also set it from 0 to 1. Then under Options, I like to uncheck Locking the Aspect Ratio. And now that we have our gradients, you can see there's a little bit of white part between our line and our area chart. So I'll go to our first mark, and for the color, I'm going to choose the same color as the top of our gradients. 
And to get rid of that little white part, I'm gonna remove the halo effect. For formatting, I'm gonna remove all three headers. And then I'll format the worksheet and I'll remove the row divider and the column divider. And under the lines, I'm gonna remove the zero lines for the sheet, so we're left with just the gradient area chart. On a dashboard, I'll add our gradient area chart worksheet. I'll resize it so that it fits this container, and then I'll hide the title. Right now, we can see the overall trend, but without the axes showing dates and values, it's hard to tell exactly when things happened or how big the changes were. So to add the date access, I'm gonna create a new worksheet called access. And for this, I just need to pull our date field into the columns, and then I'll right click and make it a day. That way it matches our gradient area chart. Then I'll change it from automatic to a polygon. And we know what these dates represent, so I'm gonna right click, edit the access, and I'll get rid of the title. Then on our dashboard, I'm gonna add our access worksheet. I'll hide the title and I'm gonna resize it so it's underneath our gradient area chart. The gradient area chart ends pretty abruptly on both sides. So instead of having the width of the worksheet match the width of the white container, I'm gonna pull it a bit further out so that the end of the gradient area chart is aligned with the end of the white container. And you can see right now there's a bit of white on the outside, so I'm gonna right click format, go to shading and change the shading to be none. And now I can pull it out so that the end of our area chart matches the end of our white container. And you can leave the access as is, but I'm gonna right click format and change the shading of the worksheet to be none also. And I also want this to fill the entire view. But because we're using normalized fields to create this gradient area chart, the tooltip doesn't give us a good idea of what the values are and when they're happening. So I'll go back to our area chart worksheet and under the second mark, I'm gonna to go to the tooltip and remove everything in there for area. And for the line, we can see that day is already in there, so I'm gonna add in our price field. Now we can edit the tooltip and I'm gonna remove everything in there that isn't the date field or the price field. And I'll just add a dollar sign in front of the price so it's clear what that value represents. And now when I hover over one of the points in our line, it's clear what the price is on that day.